Hello and welcome. I am Sachin Brahme with Avaya Serviceability Engineering. In this video, we'll see how to use the Latelist Latemark feature in Avaya Proactive Contact. The Latelist Latemark process is used for retaining the calling information in the calling list. So it basically copies the data from the old calling list, like a list1.old, to the new downloaded list, list1. The main purpose of this feature is to retain the calling information like the date and time of call, completion code, etc. So that you can tell the system not to make calls on such records which you have called already. For example, on Monday, you download your list 1, you start your job on list 1 and make calls through the day. And at the end of the day, the list 1 would be containing all the calling information for that day like which records were called, when they were called, what were the completion codes they were released with, etc. And during the midnight, an automatic process creates a copy of this list1 and names it as list1.old. So at that point, both list1 and list1.old contain the calling information for Monday. Now let's come to Tuesday. On Tuesday, you send a new raw file to the dialer and this raw file may contain new customer records and also it may contain some of the old records that you had already sent on Monday. Now when the download happens, the latelist latemark process does a compare between the two lists, that is list1.old which has the calling data from Monday and the list1 which is a fresh list on Tuesday. And for those records that appear on list1.old as well as on list1, it copies the data from list1.old to list1. We'll talk about which fields are copied and how the records are compared, etc. in a while. So basically, it will retain the calling information from the previous calling list to the new calling list. And now on Tuesday, when you run your record selection on the new list, you may not be wanting to dial some records that appear on list 1 because they were already called on previous day. And that you will be able to do because the calling information has been retained. You must note that this process will be able to retain the data only between two consecutive downloads. So if a record was sent on Monday's list and if you don't send it on Tuesday and then send it on Wednesday, then this process will not be able to retain the information. It has to be between the two consecutive downloads. If the agents place callbacks or recalls, then this latelist latemark feature becomes even more important because then you would want the dialer to retain the recall date, recall time, etc till the date when it is scheduled for. Also, there are other informations like the post update fields, fields that track the age of records, etc. that can be tracked with this feature. Now let's first look at how this is set up and then we'll briefly talk about how the process actually works. So I have an editor application open and I'm under the calling list section. I have a list four here on which we will turn on the latelist feature here. So I'll do a right click and go to download from host. I'll go to the processing tab. Here you will see the checkbox for late list, which is unchecked currently. Also, please note that the field for indexing is set to the field account number from the calling list. And this is the calling list field, which will be used for comparing the old list and the new list to find matching records. So to turn on the late list, we will check this checkbox here. When I do that, it will ask for the list of the completion codes. I'll click on this button here and it will open up a small window from where I will select the completion codes. The significance of these codes here is that whatever codes you select here, when the latelist latemark process runs, it will carry over the information from the old list to the new list only for those records which have one of these completion codes marked on this list. We'll talk about this more in a while. So I'll select all codes here and then I do a right click and go to calling list details. It will ask me to save the list first in pending mode. I'll save the list in pending mode. I'll go to the pending version, go to calling list details again. Now under the calling list dictionary tab, you will see this new column for late list. This is the place from where you'll be able to select the fields for which you want the data to be carried forward from the old list to the new list. It's very important that the first field you select here is the same field that we used for indexing the calling list, which we saw earlier under the processing section. 
it was account number there and so that's the field I have here as my first field in the calling list. For this it is always recommended that the first field in your calling list is the unique identifier for a record like an account number, a customer ID etc. And then you can select other fields also for which you want the data to be carried over. For example, I'll select the field agent, date, time, completion code, the abandoned fields for Ofcom, counter and job name, and there are these recall fields also for the callbacks. I've also selected these post update fields for two phones that is. So similarly you can select all the fields that you want to carry forward. And once you are done selecting all the fields that you want to be carried forward, you save the list again in pending mode and after the midnight maintenance cycle, the list will become active. Now let's briefly talk about how this actually works. This works in two stages. In the first stage, the late list process first extracts the records from the old list to a temporary sublist based on the completion codes that we selected. So all records that match those completion codes we selected are extracted to a temporary list with the name list1.old.late. In this example, my list1.old had 1000 records and 600 records were found to have one of those completion codes and they are extracted to list1.old.late. Now in the next step, the late mark process compares this temporary sublist with the new list that is list1 and it compares them based on the first field which we selected and the late list fields and also which should be the field used for indexing the calling list. And for all those records that are found to be appearing in both the lists, that is the temporary sublist and the new list, the data is copied over from the temporary sublist to the new list. And which fields are copied? The ones that you selected under the late list fields. So this way it copies the data from the old list to the new list for those records which match the completion codes that we selected. And this is how the late list late mark process retains the calling list information. With that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions or feedback, you may write to us at mentoratavaya.com or at Avaya Mentor on Twitter. For more details and other technical information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.